Midwestern Fat Mali, have we got a treat for you. Want to ask a fatty IRL? Ready to see my impressive pin collection up close and personal? Then strap in because we are doing our very first live episode of She's All Fat. We'll be at Flyover Fest, a fashion, politics, and culture festival focused on inclusion and equal representation taking place in downtown Iowa City on April 27th and 28th. Check out the show notes for a link to where you can buy tickets. SAF listeners can get a discount by entering our code She's All Fat at Flyover at checkout. See you in Iowa. The characters we love are the ones who embrace or deal with their bodies. And so those characters like tend to be more explicit mm-hmm. about like sexuality as opposed to like more buttoned up fat characters who were like, I was born in this white button up <laughs> and I'll die in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't want Sophie. I'm April, and this is She's All Fat, the podcast for body positivity, radical self love, and chill vibes only. This week, we'll discuss Loosely Exactly Nicole, The OC, and Stranger Danger. April, what are you obsessed with this week? All right. Um, yeah, this week was wild, so I have not consumed the like high level of media that I yeah. usually do, which is upsetting. Before this recorded, I just told April like the 20 political things that happened in the last two days. <laughs> I was like, like, huh? What? Huh? What? <laughs> like, yeah, life, we're falling apart as usual. Yeah, as usual. Life is wild. But I have had time to pay attention to a couple things. Number one, okay. these Patrick memes oh from my SpongeBob God. where like he's making this demented face. <laughs> it's so scary. <laughs> it's like, it's so good. So the ones, like the particular flavor of these memes that I've liked is the African mom memes yes so obviously i have african parents but Incredible. you know prominent african mom so i saved two to share so the first one that i saved is like the african patrick and they have like the african head wrap and like the statement necklace from yeah. Coles, like the t- <laughs> like the go-tos and so this one says african mom sending you to fetch their pink bag you'll never find because it's actually orange oh my which god really resonated with me this is so funny because we had just had a conversation about this like victor was telling us about this stuff he was reading about how like a lot of cultures like didn't have words for the color blue and i'd watched this like vox video about it too and it's like about how words for colors develop along like the same way in cultures but in some they've developed like way more than than we have in like western america culture and in some they have fewer and you were like that's so true like my mom always calls things like pink when they're red or something like that it's always like if something's green i'll say it's green and she'll say it's blue if something's orange she might say it's pink like it's almost like there's less colors yeah that she can acknowledge than we'll link the box video i'll find it for you it's super cool so it just really made me laugh because i'm like my i'm always going through that with my mom where i'm like this is orange (laughs) she's just like we learned different colors we learned different names for different colors it's so specific and like if we hadn't had that conversation i would have seen that and been like what yeah yeah, <laughs> so but it's, I mean, that's a cool thing about Twitter. I just love that other people have had that same experience, specifically with a purse, yeah. where I'm like, this is an orange purse. <laughs> She's like, no, it's not. I'm like, okay. And then the other one, what? the other African Patrick one was, when your kids are upstairs and the remote is right next to you, and it's like Patrick making this evil face, oh my because God. I'm sure other people go through this too, but with specifically with African moms, it's like, I had a child and now I'm never lifting a finger again. Like I told you, I don't know how to use a dishwasher, because my mom was like, you're a dishwasher. Like, everything <laughs> in my life is my mom's like the remote's right there but i'm calling april and you bring it for me oh my god (laughs) just triggered me because it's like it's this is like almost evil enjoyment of like my children are my servants um for me and my sister it was that my mom would call us from downstairs and then if we shouted back what she just wouldn't respond oh yeah and it was that we had to go downstairs and be like yes mom and she'd be like you can't yell at me and we'd be like you just yelled at us and she's like i'm the mom (laughs) and we'd be like Mm. We got that. Yeah, I was never. There's words you can't say, which you can't say what to your parents, mm-hmm. and you can't say you lied. Like even if my mom did fully lie, I have to be like, well, you told a story, and I experienced it differently. Oh like, my you God. can't say you lied. So just it really it felt right. Um, 
Another meme that I enjoyed, my friend Jackie Quinn, shout out to Jackie, she's a patron and a real one, sent me this meme last night that I will link in the show notes. So it says, call me by your name, 2017. And it's a photo of Gordo and Ethan Craft from oh a Lizzie McGuire movie. Oh my God. Oh my God. And this is exactly who I am as a person. <laughs> like this is the, the physical embodiment of all of my interests at one time. And it hurt me, and it made me feel whole. I really love that meme. That's so funny. Thank you, Jackie. For Jackie, the fact that you would send that to me proves that you understand me in a way that most don't. (laughs) So thank you so much. Um, Finally, people seem to love my music. My music shout outs, which shouts to my other pop princesses. Um, Really into Billie Eilish. She is this 15 year old indie pop singer and sounds like an adult and has incredible talent. My favorite song from her currently is probably um party favor so check it out we'll put a little clip to that here So those are my obsessions. What are you obsessed with this week? Okay, so I've already gotten several tweets and um, asks in our Facebook group about this. All right. Once again, shout out to our Patreon-only Facebook group. Lots of discussions happening in there. Join the Patreon if you want to be part of the Facebook group. Uh, Yeah, some of you may know or, you know, may not know. I have a tattoo, my only tattoo, which I've been planning to get for a while. I have, like, a couple other literary tattoos, like, of course, that I'm planning to get at some point. But my tattoo that I have is from my, like, childhood edition of A Wrinkle in Time, and it's Mrs. Witch's hands um, holding a string, and then the aunt is walking across during the explanation of what a tesser is, which is, like, how they travel through time. And, like, for me, it symbolizes, like, remembering that there's more than one way around any problem because I get a lot of anxiety and feel like I'm very stuck, and I'm like, no, like, I can just figure out a new way or I can go around and like also just the whole message of I just love the book so much it's like about a little girl who's like nerdy and doesn't like herself and then doesn't think she's beautiful and then she like goes on this adventure to like save her family and she saves them through like loving them so hard which is like really obviously it's very my shit. it's very, very shit. Sophie. <laughs> um and so I loved that book so much and so I was like always gonna love the movie so I went to see it by myself last night and like did cry through the entire thing which I never do so I don't think I'm a very good judge on whether or not the movie was actually good as a movie I love so what's her name stormy storm Oh, the girl? Storm? I think her name is Storm. I've been seeing her name. It's Storm. The one who plays Meg? Yeah. Okay, Storm yeah. Reed, I mm-hmm. think, is her name. Stormy Daniels is the porn star. That and Stormy Trump- Webster is Kylie's daughter. Great. Storm. A lot of storms. A lot of storms. A lot of storms. <laughs> okay, so she was so good. Like, I think this is her yeah. first thing, I've and never she's seen her yet. incredible. Ooh, I'm so excited. She's so, so good and so cute. I was telling April before this, it meant so much to me, too, like... Um, to see something that I love so much adapted with, in, with a diverse cast in a way that really like honored the original text as well as like expanding on it in the movie. Because I feel like so often when people try to do like racially or gender diverse casting, they always make a huge deal out of it in the script where they're like, and I'm a girl, but and I'm a tomboy if it's like a girl <laughs> instead of a boy or Jeez, whatever. Okay. I'm just like, can you just have the character? Like it does not matter. Like it's someone's personality traits don't have to like be associated with your body yeah you know what I mean and Ava DuVernay did such a good job uh all the character traits that I love about Meg like took on new meaning with like Storm as playing her like I was telling you she like hates her hair and that obviously has like extra meaning when she's like played by a little black girl so Oprah's in it obviously playing Oprah with glitter eyebrows. <laughs> um, Can't wait. Sold. 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 <laughs> and there's this one part where she, like, materializes, and she's, like, way bigger than everyone else. Just, like, uh, like she's, like, the size of a giant. Okay. And someone is, like, you're the wrong size. And then she's, like, is anyone really the wrong size? And I was, like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Are we finally getting Bopo Oprah? I know. That's oh what I was, God. like, whoa. It felt like a very, like, it could have been a throwaway line, but it felt like a very, like, pointed line. Because they do have, like, visual, they don't, like, talk about it that much, but they have a visual thing later with, like, talking about girls' body image stuff. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Like, that's <laughs> dope. Oh, my God. Wow, I'm so excited to see it. Yeah. Let okay, so that's think. my main thing. Also, just want to touch on two things really briefly, just that... Um, I have started watching The O.C. for the first time ever. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> California. Uh, oh, my God. Nina and uh, 
Lindsay, hashtag sorry, sorry Lindsay, Lindsay. Um, made me watch the first episode the other day when we, it was Nina's birthday. So we had macaroni, Nina and cheese that Victor made for her. And we wished you were there, but you were busy on your job filming like 13 hours a day. Yeah. Um, but they, they were like, Nina was like, for my birthday, I want you to watch the first episode of DOC. So good. And I'm halfway through the first season. It's really oh funny and I really like it. It's so, so good. Strap in. Both Nina and Lindsay said that when they drove to LA, they played the theme song. Oh, me too. <laughs> I listened to it on the flight. Yeah. <laughs> California, here we come. <laughs> It is funny watching it now because I know if I'd watched it when it came out, I wouldn't have given a shit at all about the parents' (laughs) timeline. But, like, now I really care about the parents. I always feel like that with teen shows. Yeah, I'm like, what? It's like strife. It's like for the adults. Yeah, like the marital strife for the parents. But I love them. Sandy Cohen, he's, like, so far the best character. I really love him. I agree. And then finally, it's just this little thing I want to share. Okay, so National Geographic um, posted this article today that this is just i'm going to read you the title of it okay for decades our coverage was racist to rise above our past we must acknowledge it the deck is we asked a preeminent historian to investigate our coverage of people of color in the u.s and abroad here's what he found it's published by the editor-in-chief it's part of their special issue called the race issue and they're like trying to do a whole hashtag it love of stuff and basically they're just like acknowledging for how like the last century National Geographic really treated like people in other countries like and black people in America as like animals totally, basically totally. was like look at this beautiful spread of the savanna and also here's a crazy looking tribe yeah. or whatever in their natural habitat exactly and like that's super shitty and yeah. like really contributed I'm sure a lot to the way that people thought about like people in other countries but I think that it's really cool that they're trying to be accountable mm-hmm. and like take a look, real look at their past and like reckon with it. Let's recognize that like whatever image you have of your Africa of Africa in your head is a picture from National Geographic. Exactly. <laughs> like that's what's in your head and they decided that. And this is so important. I'm so excited that that's happening. Yeah, so there's this one part I want to read from it where and again this is from the editor in chief and she says, "How we present race matters. I hear from readers that National Geographic provided their first look at the world. Our explorers, scientists, photographers and writers have taken people to places they'd never even imagined. It's a tradition that still drives our coverage." and of which we're rightly proud. And it means we have a duty in every story to present accurate and authentic depictions, a duty heightened when we cover fraught issues such as race. And then she goes on to be like, here's how we did it wrong. Here's how we did it wrong. Here's how we did it wrong. Dang, that's dope. What's really cool, right? And then at the end, she says, for us, this issue provided an important opportunity to look at our own efforts to illuminate the human journey. I want a future editor of National Geographic to look back at our coverage with pride, not only about the stories we decided to tell and how we told them, them, but about the diverse group of writers, editors, and photographers behind the work, blah, blah. Sometimes these stories, like parts of our own history, are not easy to read. But as Michelle Norris writes in this issue, it's hard for an individual or a country to evolve past discomfort if the source of the anxiety is only discussed in hushed tones. Isn't that so good? Wow. I'm like, wow, they're like really grappling with it. That's really, actually kind of makes me sad how rare that is. Yeah. Oh, it's so rare. Hey, I did real damage. Uh, Sorry. Let's do better. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. All those things will be linked in the show notes. Yay. Um, And let's do some shout outs. So first we're going to shout out some of our Patreon supporters. Again, link in the show notes to become a patron. And if you're $7 and above, you can join our cool Facebook group where we're having so much fun. Yeah. We're bonding. It's like an endless online sleepover. Um, okay, so here's some of our patrons. Julie Ann Horvath, Christine Clarahan, Libby Weibel, Haley Klein, Nicole Purcell Phillips, and Noel Borg. Thank you all so much. Thank you, guys. We also have some Apple Podcast review shout-outs. Um, uh, somebody tagged us in an Instagram post of us like featured in some way on the Apple Podcast store. I couldn't so, find it. I couldn't find it again, but here's what it was. It was bold women and then subcategory self-care. So What's cool. Up? So cool. <laughs> What's up? So thank you so much for sharing that with us, and um, hopefully one day we'll be on New and Noteworthy as well. But that's really cool, and that's I like dope. loved being tagged in that. So um, thank you so much to these people who, these are your usernames. If you wrote a review for us on Apple Podcast, we appreciate you so much. Fossils Moon, Fun Stephanie, Bubbles 717, SLP 1115, Mama T22, MG Freddy, um, and, oh, I don't know how to say <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know how to say Casey's full name. Okay. Casey Moby Udo, Udo Okoye. Okay. Okoye from uh, Black Panther. I'm sorry, Casey. I failed you there. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you so much. Really helps us. And one day we'll get there, you guys. We're, we're on our way. Okay. Let's yeah. move on to some correction corner, some news corner. All right. First thing, a lot of people tagged us on Twitter with this drag race fat suit controversy and was like, did you do this on purpose with your fat suit episode? We did, <laughs> we did not. not. It's just that fat suits are a problem. Hair problem. So to <laughs> clarify, yeah. let's say what happened briefly. So Shangela, who is like a very polarizing fan favorite, donned a fat suit for the lip sync battle, which is like the final phase before they're voted off or they stay as you like lip sync. So she put on a fat suit for comic relief and apparently RuPaul loved it and a lot of people text or DM'd us, especially um, they DM'd us tweets from other drag queens who were saying that they were really hurt and offended, like other fat drag queens who yeah. had been a part of the Ru- RuPaul verse saying like, hey, this really hurt my feelings. Let's stop doing fat suits, which hard agree. Um, other correction. So I'm just going to read this little, this little email we got. <laughs> Um, okay, I do have one teensy correction. April was talking about her love of Call Me By Your Name, and she mentioned my favorite singer slash songwriter of all time, Sufjan Stevens. I wanted to give you a heads up that his name is pronounced Sufjan, not Suf John. So much love and appreciation to you both. Appreciation to you both. I thought you were doing a bit when you did it that way, honestly. <laughs> no, I didn't know how to say his name, but listen, I, I, and usually I'm like, whatever, I'm not doing corrections. Literally, the music in Call Me By Your Name means so much to me. <laughs> The fact that I could mispronounce this, like, artist of my life's name hurts me to my core. I am so sorry to Sufjan and all of Sufjan's lovers and fans. <laughs> like, literally, I don't know how I could do this, it's but okay. mystery of love forever. Yeah. <laughs> Feudal devices forever. Yeah. And I'm so sorry. Here we are. We're all people, you know? Great. I just wanted to do a little quick um, say about Southwest customer size policy. I've had a lot of trouble getting my money back from Southwest (laughs) for this policy. So just want to say like, you guys, this is a little bit harder to do than I was initially told. Cause Mm -hmm. like the information I gave on the travel episode was just that you call afterwards and they refund it. I found out that the number I had been calling, they had been submitting things and nothing had been refunded to me. And I had to like call corporate and I had to like do all these things. It was a nightmare. And then I was, um, I spent this weekend with like my best girlfriends from college, like shout out to you guys, including hashtag sorry, Lindsay. Um, when I was at the airport, the first person told me they could do it for me at the gate. And then when I was coming back, they were like, no, you definitely can't. Like, they just don't have their shit together about it. Ugh. Like, they're clearly just really hoping you don't ask for it and <laughs> pay for two seats. What I've heard now is that the best way to do it is, like, go online after the flight and submit a form using just the, like, contact us email thing. Okay. And you put the, like... Um, if you have like a rapid rewards number and then you put the confirmation number for the flight and then you submit that and you say like customer of size policy refund and then there's a paper trail. But, you know, no guarantees. I'm just like pretty annoyed about it. That's uh, really frustrating. <laughs> but like it should just work. So like keep making noise about it. If this has happened to you as well, we'll keep working on it. Ugh. Okay. Right. Okay. And we have our first audio tip jar. Super excited to play this. So let's do it. Yay. Hey, Sophie and April, this is Hannah, a fat positive health at every size dietitian. And I just want to say, first of all, I love, love, love the podcast and everything you ladies are putting out into the world. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Um, And I wanted to offer a couple of things for the tip jar after your episode on going to the doctor, which was a phenom episode. One of the things that I noticed is that you had provided a couple of resources for people who are looking for support related to some co-occurring medical issues. And so I wanted to provide for you a couple of resources for your listeners to be aware of. Um, The first is a wonderful dietitian named Migret Fletcher, who specializes in health at every size, weight neutral counseling for diabetes specifically. She's co-authored a couple of books, one specifically with a physician by the name of Michelle May called Eat What You Love, Love with You Love What You Eat with Diabetes. So that's worth checking out. And then the other person I wanted to mention specifically is Julie Duffy Dillon, who is an amazing colleague of mine who specializes in PCOS with a non-diet weight neutral approach 
coach, and she has a fantastic online course. We need more fat dietitians. There aren't that many of us doing the work. There are some, but not as many. So I just wanted to put that out there. And thank you, thank you, thank you for the amazing work that you guys do. Have a good one. Bye. Um, So thank you so much to that Hannah for writing in and giving us those tips. Another Hannah wrote in and recommended the exact same people. Cool. Um, Yeah. So another shout out to Eat What You Love, Love What You Eat for Diabetes by Michelle May. We'll link that in the show notes as well as um, Julie Duffy Dillon. Um, And then this Hannah also recommended... um, PCOS and foodpeace.com, which is from this Julie Duffy Dillon person. She specializes in PCOS and she is a self described fat positive dietitian. Any other people who have PCOS, um, if you're interested, those links are now in the show notes. Thank you so much, Hannah's, for reaching out and helping us out with some more recommendations. We so appreciate you. All right. We should really get to the meat of it, don't you think? Let's do it. <laughs> The meat, meat of it. it. This week on the meat of it, I always have a like strong inclination to do an Ira Glass voice at this point. Do it. Like, this week on the meat of it, we're talking about a TV show on Facebook. Weird, huh? The world. <laughs> like that's how he would. <laughs> is that not what he would do? Sophie, like, that's coming up. Perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. Oh my god. Um, that <laughs> part <well>. one. <laughs> this American Life today. Part one. Fat on Facebook. <laughs> wow. The episode is fat on Facebook. <laughs> wow, that was fantastic. So um, we're talking yeah. about Loosely Exactly Nicole, which is Nicole Byers' Facebook show. Yeah, originally on MTV, then canceled, then brought back to life on Facebook. Facebook is now streaming. The internet is real life. Everything's <laughs> the opposite. Yep. Yes. Um, this is an episode that is highly, highly, highly requested from our listeners. Like, yeah. at least once a day, someone's like, are you listening to, are you watching? Lucy? I know. Exactly. It's cool. so funny. If y'all don't know who she is, she is a fat black comedian. Um, so we wanted to talk about her show okay. here today. So first, let me ask you. Like, have you seen it before, and what was your impression before we watched it for this episode? I haven't watched any of the things we've talked about for Fatty Film School before. Really? We, yeah, I don't think so. What did Have you heard, like, people tweeting about it? Like, did you have an idea in your head of what it would be? Um, I'd only seen ads for it, oh, like, okay. on YouTube, I guess, or I guess okay. maybe natively in native Facebook videos. Okay, cool. Um, and, like, other embedded content. I, but I, I thought it looked like it would be good. I'm supportive of her. I already, like, knew that I liked most of her comedy, so I was, like, pleasantly pumped to yeah. watch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm also also pleasantly pumped. I yeah. want more. I like um, small, small concept shows, mm-hmm. so the show is just, like, her her life, her just like eating pizza and doing stuff, yeah. which I like. I like like high concept shows too. Like obviously we love the good place, but I like shows about just like people's lives, especially since fat people's day to day lives are not on TV. Yeah. Like just like the mediocre stuff yeah. that I'm into. Here is a little clip from the second episode of the series that I feel like really embodies like who Nicole is as a character. Okay. I'm not gonna apologize for my orgasms. I'm a mom woman in charge of her sexuality hear my pussy roar people hear my pussy roar okay so let's talk about some things that stood out we watched the first episode the second and then you watched the third number one i just love that she's like such a fuck up yeah <laughs> like i think that's awesome because there's so many characters it's especially a thing with black women where it's like the olivia pope school of like i'm perfect gotta have it together gotta have it together i'm like excellent i wear a white coat every day I, like have my shit together and she's like whatever yeah. like yeah. It, the, like it opens and she's like eating pizza and sweating or whatever and it's just like anything Amazing. like i just love that she's a fuck up um so she is a struggling actress yeah i feel like there's like so many shows that are like this charming like average white man is such a fuck up don't you want to watch his foibles and i'm like <laughs> No. No, thank you. But, like, this is a new one, really. Yeah. And, I, and I, it just feels realistic, to be honest. Yeah. But she said she's, like, so she works, she lives in L.A., obviously. She's, like, a struggling actress and a nanny, and it just feels familiar, this whole thing of, like, I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. There's this, like, sort of goal that I want yeah. that is, like, in the distance, and I'm just, like, having fun while I try to get there. Yeah, exactly. One thing I found very familiar, too, is how she and her friends talk about achieving, like, how much they pump each other up for the smallest things. Yes. It's really very similar. So I, I so appreciate, like, the friendships in that. And, yeah, I just love her kind of, like, fail, not even really upward. Just a she's just, like, of figuring it out. She's just figuring it out. Yeah. So she's, she's trying to book stuff. She's not really booking things. She's not as stressed out about it as she could be. Yeah. Um, as 
as proven by this clip. You know, after I book a commercial, my foot's like basically in the door. I'm gonna get cast as Emma Stone's black best friend in a rom-com. I'll finish this presentation, Maddie. You go get your man. Um, she has a lot of interactions with children, which make me laugh. She's a yeah. nanny. I love kids. And she's just is like a bad nanny and a bad influence. Oh my god. And, like, <laughs> yeah. Eats their snacks and like doesn't know how to do anything. It's so funny. <laughs> so he has Suzuki method at two, Kumon at four, and he can watch six minutes of PBS if he's good. Oh, he's always good. Hi, Troy. Hi, Nicole. We packed you lots of fruit snacks, just like you like. What? Oh, we gotta go. Bye. I love her relationship with the kid in these couple episodes. I think it's really fun. It's so good. Um, what else I love about Nicole is that she's really optimistic. Yeah. Despite the fact that she's not, like, successful in any way. <laughs> like, she's really just, um, like, like we said, like a fuck up and trying to figure it out. But she always thinks, like, hey, maybe this will be my big break. Maybe yeah. I'll figure it out. And, like, when's the last time you saw, like, a fat optimist not going to a Weight Watchers yeah. meeting. Yeah, and she, like, likes herself, clearly. She really She's likes like, herself. There's a plot with a man, but it's not, like, it's not, like, she'll never find love. No. It's, like, she's, like, ooh, blah, blah, blah. It's, like, the same, it's this the same plot that a thin character could have. And Absolutely. that's all I want. I love it. And I yeah. love how the show covers it, not in a way that's, like, patronizing. Like, yeah. sometimes, sometimes fat characters, as we talked about in our dating episode, it'll be, like, oh, she's, like, slanging dicks and it's, like, yeah. played for jokes or whatever. Yeah. But she's, like, no, I'm just dating. She's, like, yes. 25. She's, like, I'm just dating. People want me. There's also just this clip I really love of her forcing a child to do blackface yeah, for an audition. Yeah, that was really funny. It's a long story. Check it out on Facebook. Yeah, there's also, in episode three, there's a lot more race stuff, like, done in a, in a humorous manner when she goes to the hair salon and she brings her white friend with oh her. God. It's pretty funny. The show's about her and also her two close friends. So there's Veronica, which is her, like, straight-laced, like, white friend. I love the idea of, of having the best friend be a thin white girl instead of a fat black girl. I mean, I could see just from, like, the pilot that that was, like, the a idea. conversation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, that was, like... I love it. I'm not going to be the side character. In fact, I'm going to have a side character. To the point where her, like, white friend is like, girl, he did what? Yeah, like, she's yeah. Like, she's the Octavia Spencer it's and never incredible. been kissed. It's so good. Um, but Veronica is obviously like her own person too. There's this clip I really like from the pilot where they talk about her being a BJ queen, mm-hmm. which in reality turns out she's not a BJ queen. She just like <laughs> had sex with this guy and then he like went into an anaphylactic shot yeah. and like almost died. You know, he almost died. <laughs> I bet that's every guy's dream death by BJ. You know, all that being said, I've never had any complaints and I do have a 100% success rate. So I'll take the title. I'm the BJ queen. But she's cool. And yeah, like we said, her friends are super supportive of everything she does. And when she talks about her dating life, they don't treat it like, oh, I'm so glad you found someone who yeah. like is willing to deal with your body. They're just like... They have concerns yeah. about her happiness yes. in relation to this guy. They have concerns about her being ready to be in a relationship, but none of it has to do with her weight. It's so nice because there there is a balance between wanting both more fat issues represented and also just wanting more fat people represented. Because my whole life is not about being fat. No. It like informs forms everything it's not like everyone else gets to do it this way and then i do it this way yeah like no i'm still normal still people yeah but it's so nice to see that reflected in media because i have had that experience of like talking about a guy or something and having a quote-unquote friend be like well he likes you so shouldn't you just put up with it because who else is gonna like you it's like nah so her friend Devin is also fat he's white and he is gay and they have a lot in common yeah um here's a little clip of him like supporting her when she's dating this guy who's like trash obviously but he wants her to be happy so here's a little clip he likes you he likes you hold on i want to take a selfie so i can remember what i was wearing when i found out derek likes you do you really i love that they're both fat like she's not the only fat person on the show yeah and it's not like veronica's like me and my two fat friends Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) all of this seems normal but like if you consume media you know that it's It's really not not, normal it's really not at all and i'm sure again her having another fat person on the show was like also an argument because yeah. again on this is us they only allow one right <laughs> like, and there on, can only be on one modern family just the oh, one yeah. that's true there There's can only be one. one but she was like no i want i want another it's so fun i can't wait to watch more to see if they like because in the very beginning when they're both like super sweaty and hot mm-hmm. i was like yeah i love that that was yeah. so funny we're into it because we always talk about those moments on our podcast where it's like having a fat friend means you can be like we're out of breath yeah <laughs> and, like we can enjoy that moment yeah. with anyone else they're like you're out of breath fat ass yeah. and we're like oh, 
<laughs> You're like, actually, I'm fine. I'm fine. Who's fine? Stairs. Who pretend. cares about? <laughs> but it's just nice having someone to appreciate those like realities of living in a fat body yeah, and being totally. able to laugh at them. Like especially since she's a black woman. Black women are always in conversation with other black women when it becomes like when it comes to the media they create. So I just love where she's just like, I'm not like fat Issa Rae. I'm not trying to present myself mm-hmm. as like poor Olivia Pope. I'm just like, this is my story. Yeah. It is what it is. And like, I'm having fun with it. And I just yeah. want to see more of that. <laughs> um, another thread for characters we cover on Fatty Film Schools, they all tend to be like huge hornballs. Yes, if so you notice, true. all of our like protagonists that are close to our heart are like, especially thinking about you, Ray, from my Matt Fat well, Diary. I think that's because like any character we the characters we love are the ones who embrace or deal with their bodies and so those characters like tend to be more explicit mm-hmm. about like sexuality as opposed to like more buttoned up fat characters who were like i was born in this white button up <laughs> and i'll die in it you know what i mean yeah we don't want any, any more like fat never nudes like yeah. i just like that she's like yeah i'm trying to like smash this exactly dude. i'm excited about my body i'm like, excited about the future if we were to let ilana from broad city do it she could do it too exactly and like you know? she she does yeah. there's this clip of her hooking up with this guy who is just like the perfect tone of trash like yeah. i know that exact guy you smell good today i got mcdonald's earlier mm. um she talks about being into channing tatum which like who isn't yeah she talks about liking short men which hey, i loved this very clip. into it yes it's so funny <laughs> we'll have that those clips in here if you could take a trip around the world with one guy who would it be hmm channing potatum potatum yeah, he looks like a sexy potato, so I'm gonna call him Channing Potato. You like little men? I like them little, okay? <laughs> a little Polly Pocket of a man? Yes, you better give it to me! Yeah, I like the way that she talks about her sexuality, and I like that it's never, like, qualified by, like, well, these are my options because I'm fat or whatever. Yeah. She's just like, I'm out, on, I'm in these streets. Yeah. She's in these streets. She's She is. I'm happy for her. Which is, like, also, again, as we said, like, the experience for a lot of us. I also relate to her. I mean, obviously, if, li- if you've listened to our fat dating episode, I'm, I relate to her notion of like, yeah, I'm attracted to guys, but when I really think about a relationship, is that really what I want? Yeah. No. Yeah. And her friends like recognize that in her before she does. And I also am excited for our future fat dating episode where I'm like, change my mind. Me and Kofi Sirabo are getting married. Oh my God. Okay. Like, that'll, be, that'll be fun. Ball. Um, She's dope. She's like dating. She's on the prowl and... I, I can't wait to see more episodes and see, like, if she does decide she's ready for a relationship, mm-hmm. if she keeps, like, hooking up with trash dudes and having fun with it. Like, I want to see where she's going. Yeah, me too. I'm very down. So that is kind of our summary of the first couple episodes of this show. So I'm going to ask a question I always ask in these episodes, okay. borrowed from the pod, the nod, which I love. Pod and nod rhyme. This is good for the fats. So I think we covered a lot of ways it is good for the fats. There's this one there's one clip in the beginning of episode three. I just got to say, this new confrontational you is so powerful and skinny. No, not today, Nicole. Really? Yeah, your waist is so small. Really? Oh, yeah. Yes. No, you're right. I feel it. It's like a little strong. Ooh, suck me up. Why I'm so tiny. So I think this clip is, like, interesting because... It does, like, reflect an experience I've had in the past of telling other fat friends, like, no, you look so thin. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, like, not super harmful the way that they do it because it's kind of, like, jokey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then even when the white friend afterward is, like, no, like, you're not thin, Mm -hmm. (laughs) then, like, it's still a lighthearted joke in kind of the same way that... Like, it felt like a, like a new girl kind of joke or oh, something. Oh, totally, yeah. And, like, it didn't feel s- super mean-spirited. No, yeah. I, you know I, I think mean? they I think they play it right because it could be yeah. a delicate thing. And it reminds me of the thing we're always making fun of where girls were like, I brought my boyfriend's sweater and I'm just, like, drowning <laughs> just, in like, it. Just, like, so like, tiny. So I'm like, oh, my God, the wind. I'm, like, blown away <laughs> in the gold. wind. I'm, like, so oh, tiny. My skin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and I love that they're making fun of that. And it also, it, but it is interesting to me that that's the first time I really noticed them explicitly say, like you look thin or you look fat or mm-hmm, something totally so like i hope further in the apps like we're gonna get a bunch of tweets about this if it if it does happen right. but i hope that further in the apps she like does talk about being fat mm-hmm. just like one one time yeah or twice it comes up yeah because yeah. like this part i like don't know how that would be read by non-fat people mm-hmm. you know what i mean but i still think like i think that we should be allowed to make jokes about being fat yeah or like talk about it and the the way that she makes the rest of the show makes me feel 
more trust in her to allow her to make that joke. Absolutely. Does that make sense? No, that totally makes sense. And I, yeah, I do want to see more of like the ways that we can make fun of it in a way, I mean, kind of in the similar way where we do chill vibes only on the show is like, how can we talk about our bodies in a not like very special episode yeah. sort of way? And so I appreciated that scene for that. And I, yeah, I want to see what, what happens in the future. Exactly. I also agree that I think it's good for the fats just to show a different fat experience. Yeah. Like just literally any exposure to fat characters I think will be good for the fats regardless of the drawbacks. Same as This Is Us. Like I'm still happy that This Is Us exists because we're on TV, mm-hmm. even if it's like, you know, a problematic depiction. I wanted to shout out Brit and Co. did a really cool article where they interviewed her about her perspectives on making the show and like, you know, all of her various intersections and her comedic influences and stuff. And she said this quote that I really believe in, so I wanted to share it with you. Okay. She said, You're Me not specifically. You, you, but also all of our Hannah's <laughs> okay. and Henry's and th- such as at home. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. You're not too fat, you're not too black, and you can do it. If one door closes, another one will open. And if you don't think you're getting the opportunities that you deserve, do it yourself. Put your shit on YouTube, put your shit on Vimeo, just get your shit out there and let the general public consume it. Which I really believe in. And obviously, like, it's really hard to make something. We make media and it's very hard yeah. and we're tired. But I so, like, am always inspired by that mindset of just kind of, like, it's really frustrating to sit and wait for someone to tell you to make your thing. Yeah. So you should try to make your thing. Like, yeah. regardless if you feel limited by your body, obviously, like, those limitations are realistic if we totally. live in this society. But, like, still try to make your thing. Like, I, I love agree. that she said that. And I think she's really cool for making it when I know it's super hard. And I know people have said some really shady shit to it's her. super hard also because like, she's this, done it there's variations of that quote that are said in a way that's like and if you haven't made it it's yeah. your own fault no, which, is, which like, is not true at all and i do not believe in that because i know how hard it is to make yeah. it even people like film it on your iphone it's like dude an iphone costs a thousand dollars like i understand i get it but like yeah. if there's any way you can make any like little version of the thing you want to make I also think, I do think it's very notable that, like, the two younger black women who have been given shows that come to mind, which is, like, her and Issa Rae. Totally. They both had to literally create whole shows. Oh, yeah. Before they were noticed. Totally. Like, they had to make an entire proof of concept. But, like, you know, there's other people who are like, I see myself in this young white man for some reason. Totally, And then they, like, give them a whole thing. bring them up. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, there's, like, so many more barriers to entry. And I think... Like, she clearly is hustling all the time. Yeah. Like I said, like, I see her post shows every single day. Like, she's out here. How is she not, like, she does not look super tired in there. Yeah, I don't know how. Yeah. She's not exhausted. I'm exhausted. But she's doing the damn thing. Yeah. And I'm on her side. Yeah. So that's the meat of it for this week. We've analyzed the television show Loosely Exactly Nicole. You're You're welcome. welcome. Today's episode is sponsored by Tomboy X. If you're in the market for new, super cute underwear in sizes extra small to 4X, you might be into Tomboy X. They carry a ton of different options, from bikinis to briefs to boxer briefs to trunks and boy shorts, Tomboy X has got you covered. I have the Essential Soft Bra in a 4X and it is incredible. I love how soft and comfortable the whole bra is and the band hugs me just right. All their products come in super fun colors and prints. Everything is available sizes extra small to 4X. My favorite Tomboy X products are the iconic briefs and Essential Soft Bra in white. I got a booty that just won't quit, and I'm happy to report that the iconic briefs cover the whole width of my butt. She wrote that. I absolutely did, and I stand by it. If you've got one too, check them out. Go to tomboyx.com slash SAF and check out their special bundles and pack pricing. She's All Fat listeners get an extra 15% off with code SAF. Again, code SAF for an extra 15% off. Ditch whatever you're wearing for a pair of Tomboy X underwear tomboyx.com slash S-A-F. And now it's time to ask a fatty. If you want advice, you can send a voice memo of yourself asking a question to FYI at she's all fat pod.com. You can record it on your computer or the voice memo app on your iPhone. Just keep it short, about one minute max. Or if you're shy, you can send us a plain old email at FYI at she's all fat pod.com. And we might answer your question right here on the show. This week on Ask a Fatty, we have a very special letter from hannah hi sophie and april this is hannah and i am looking for some advice i am a visibly fat person size 22 24 somewhere around there and recently i had a really weird interaction 
I was at a cafe, and as I was getting my laptop out to work on some stuff, a complete stranger came up to me and gave me a piece of paper with a doctor's name on it. The stranger said I should look the doctor up because the doctor, quote-unquote, changed his life and left before I could say anything. Curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to at least Google the name. One of the top results was a doctor whose main focus is working with patients to fast as a way to lose weight and treat type 2 diabetes. I don't want to give this doctor traffic, but as far as I can tell, his main focus is working in dieting and telling people to not eat for long stretches of time. I literally never met or talked to this stranger before in my life, and I was wondering if you guys had any suggestions with dealing with comments from strangers about your weight and size. And I also wanted to say thank you for this show and being just such badass chill babes because I don't think I would be as okay with what happened without this show. I've struggled with my weight and my body and body positivity and mental health for pretty much my entire life. And while I've gotten used to comments about my weight from family and healthcare professionals, comments from strangers and friends always makes me feel super self-conscious and gives me really intense anxiety. So I was just wondering if you guys had any advice or maybe some of your followers had some advice. Um, Anyway, thank you again for the show and thanks. Okay. All right, Hannah. Hannah. Okay. (laughs) Wait, let me note this email was called Stranger Danger. Oh my God. (laughs) You go first. Because okay. You're really There's upset. a couple. There's a couple <laughs> things to address here. Okay. Hey, number one. Thank you for your kind words, Hannah. We're really glad that we feel, you feel like we're here for you because we are here for you. Absolutely. That is, we made this show for you and other people uh, like so you. We're here for you to witness it because um, this seems ridiculous. This is fucked up. But this has happened to me. Oh, me too. Times. This has happened to me as well. So, okay. Number one, I just want to say that it's fucked up. It really sucks. <laughs> It's um, so wild. I've had so many people come up and say shit like that to oh, me. Yeah. One time when I was a teenager, a woman came up to me in a Nordstrom rack, put her hand on my stomach, and then handed me a card, and it said <laughs> her name, and then it said, for prenatal yoga. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Once I worked in this bagel bakery <laughs> in high school, a man came up to me and he said, I'm a psychic and I see weight loss in your future. Oh, and my gave God. Me this card that was like for psychic readings and like yeah. diet clinic. I mean, yeah, I've had this Leave happen as well. This has definitely happened. Like I've had people come over and tell me about like about their diets or whatever. Or I've had, you know, I've also just had people. I think this falls under the category of like people in public thinking they can comment on your body. I've had people come over and make comments about the food I've ordered. I've had people come over and make comments about how brave I am to wear the outfit I'm wearing, you know, like I think, um, when you're fat or, you know, I'm sure you've had these, you've had, you've told me about weird comments you've gotten just for being black as well. Anytime you're like not in the like cis white thin norm, or like ideal, then you you know not actually ideal, but like whatever. Yeah, we're living understand. in this society. We get it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Then like you get you people act like your body is like open season for consumption and critique and like in a, public debate in a way that it's really not. I was at the Grove with um one of my my friend Alex and this who we've I've like talked about before. She's like a cool fat friend as well this guy came over and he was like an older man and he was foreign and he tried to like, he was like, excuse me, I'd like to tell you about this diet. And I just like cursed him out. Yeah. (laughs) And it was like really freeing actually, because for myself, whenever it happens, I get really red. And Mm -hmm. then I'm like, no, thank you. Like I haven't really had it happen since I've been body positive, but, and I wonder how much that has to do with like the way I carry myself Mm -hmm. now or whatever, or just like being a little older, but like, uh, not that this is your fault, Hannah, at all, but just like, no. I, you know, um, I've had it happen less since I think I'm more like confident seeming, mm-hmm. but uh, this guy just came over and I was just like, nope, you can fuck off right now. Yeah, and absolutely. I kept saying it until he walked away and he called me a bitch and I was like, yep, Good. bye, goodbye, Good. goodbye. Good. And Alex was like really moved because she was like, no one's ever done that for me before because people have also come up to her and done that. Mm-hmm. And I've never had anyone there when it's happened to me either. Absolutely. And just like you are also allowed to do that for yourself like regardless of what was on the paper you don't get to go up to people and hand them doctor things Please you don't, don't speak, fucking know don't about speak people's to strangers <laughs> what what no. are you doing no 
Oh like, my God. so, you know, I think like, that's one thing if anyone's listening and is like, what would I do in that situation? Just be like, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> like, like fully no embrace. Thank you. I fully embrace my resting bitch face. So yeah. people genuinely are afraid to come up to me, but just, I honestly, when this happens to me, I adopt the mindset of like when a, an aggressive male canvasser approaches yeah. from my peripheral, <laughs> which I'm like, no, thank you. No, yes. thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Until they back away. But also like, I recognize that sometimes you just like freeze in those moments. Like oh, when I got totally. the psychic card when I was 16. Well, also like, because okay. as a woman or a femme, I, if you're a woman or a femme person, then you also are like not only trained to be polite, but kind of trained to be afraid totally. of strangers, yeah, which especially men. Be. Men are dangerous. Yeah. And yeah. so like, you know, especially with that and like being trained that being polite keeps keeps you safe, which mm-hmm. it does not. No. But like it's really hard in the moment when you're like, what's going on? And yeah. who's who are you and yeah. what and do why? you want? Yeah. Oh my god. Like it's really difficult to know what to do in the moment. So like please don't feel bad for like not doing that. No. Just like I only thought to do it because I had spent some time doing one of those like angry shower reminiscing about times oh, that had happened in the past God. to me and planning what I would do in the future. And so when it happened to Alex, I was like, you're ready. ready. You're like head in the fucking game. Yeah. But like, <laughs> yes. if I hadn't done that, I would have, it, it would have not happened. No, you know what I mean? It's so hard. Yeah. In the moment you're just like, is this real life? A stranger yes. is doing, a stranger is like, like here's like, a car what? for you to stop eating. Oh my like, God. What? We found out recently through our survey, thank you to everyone who's taken our survey, that we have a lot of street sized listeners. Yeah. So to the very cool street sized listeners, you and guys allies are really cool. who are like sticking with us, like here to listen to us scream at you. <laughs> like if this happens in front of you, you gotta say something because in the moment you really are deer in headlights. You really are like, like, what? Wow, is this really happening? Is this stranger it, really telling me to starve it myself right now? Always happens just when you're by yourself. Yeah, that's very true. That is very true. But if I, I can't think of a time when I've had it happen to somebody else. But if it ever does happen to someone in front of you and you have the the thought in your head of like, should I step in? Like step you in. Have to step, step in, in and say fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, because otherwise that person will continue to think it's okay. Because yeah. the weird thing is, like, the person who's doing it, they think they're well-meaning. Oh, yeah. That someone, person was like, I did my good deed for I'm the day. I'm trying to help someone. Like, someone like has I'm paying to, it forward. Totally. Someone has to scream at them, or they're going to keep doing that to people. <laughs> yeah. So, Like, yeah. if you can't imagine being the kind of person who would go over to someone and hand them a doctor's card, congrats, you're a good person. Jeez. Like, I can't imagine. You can't. It, it, just the fact that it's about like a, a doctor at all, like or health at all, is like partly what's mind blowing to me. Mm-hmm. Just nobody, you should never, you cannot assume health by looking at someone. You cannot like assume health issues by looking at someone, and like you, you can't recommend a doctor to a stranger. Like and also because I think this person shares the same mindset we talked about in our health episode, which is like, no, um, fat people never forget they're fat. Uh, yeah. Strangers feel free to never speak of it. Yeah, it's don't totally do fine. You have no idea where they are and their journey. And Hannah, like we see you. This we has happened you. to both of us. Hannah, I'm really sorry that happened. And thank you so much for writing us. Um, I don't think we mentioned any resources actually. <laughs> Just like Just general screaming. Be cool. Just be, be cool. cool. Be, be cool, cool and be chill. Let us know how it's going, Hannah. Thanks, Hannah. Now let's move on to It's Okay You Can Ask, a segment that Sophie has been called brave for participating in. At our launch party, several yeah. people. Ridiculous. And in tweets. Thank Ridiculous. Thank you so much for witnessing me. I appreciate it. No. We'll find out the answers to our burning questions like, <laughs> I can't believe you're calling me out for this. <laughs> is B2K the name of a serial killer? Or... What is nutritional yeast? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay, so April, you told me that you really enjoyed when I, like, suggested that you find five black things that you didn't think I would know and ask you about them. Absolutely. So I tried to do the same thing for white things. So I want to do, like, a caveat before this, which is that, like, there's many kinds of whiteness. (laughs) What's happening? (laughs) Well, just that, like... If I do something that a friend of color calls very white, mm-hmm. what it usually means is like upper middle class waspy. Mm-hmm. And just like I think the fact that that is what is the go-to image of white people is part of what comes back again to racist stereotypes of other people because that implies that like not being white means being poor. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Kind mm-hmm. of. So like just want to say like there's 
white Jewish people. Mm-hmm. There's white yeah. poor people. Totally. There's and white also, people like, that this doesn't apply to. You. Not in a like we need to think of diverse whiteness, but just like <laughs> but no. But I understand what you're saying. Okay. But also like when I think of variations of like being wealthy, the experience of like black wealthy people that I've like heard of through friends <laughs> is not the same as what you describe your upbringing at. Yeah. Either. So I think like you know everyone's having their own experiences, but that said, generalizations are fun. Okay. <laughs> so let's yeah. Do so it. I just want to say like yeah. I'm sure a lot of people who are white who are listening will be like I don't know what these things are or. Maybe you'll know what all these things are. Yeah. So well, just we'll like, see. I think that, you know, whiteness as wealth is an interesting thing to talk about in a very complex way, mm-hmm. but I think it can be a damaging stereotype for uh, for people of color, not yeah. for white people. That, cool. that said, let's play. Okay. Okay. Do you know who Marilyn Robinson is? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> who is that? <laughs> okay. So Marilyn Robinson is this... <laughs> I'm just going to show you this picture of her from her right. Wikipedia page. That's Marilyn Robinson. Okay, I know that She's type. like a white lady guru, <laughs> basically. Right. Um, she's written a bunch of stuff that she's gotten a lot of awards for. Like, the people who love her are the people who are now... Like, Cheryl Strayed loves her. Okay. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That would make sense. Like, it's like people who always talk about having an open heart. Wait, so what... Yeah, what was her teaching? Was she, like, the spiritual type? Um, okay, so she... Wrote a bunch of books. I actually like... She wrote this novel, Housekeeping, which I actually do really like. Um, I'm just going to read some of the Wikipedia to be more helpful. Um, Her novels are noted for their thematic depiction of both rural life and faith. Um, The subjects of her essays have spanned numerous topics, including the relationship between religion and science, John Calvin, and contemporary American politics. Let's see. She, like, a lot of times people who are, like, Christian spiritually kind of talk about her stuff a lot it's like family stuff plus like just like nature-y kind of stuff Barack Obama quoted her okay apparently really wait so how do you find like how do you how are you introduced to someone like this because if it were me and it were a black lady it would be like Oprah told me <laughs> but like who is this um I've seen people uh, I just see a lot of white women post about her on Facebook Really? Yeah. Wait, so at what phase in your life did you read this? Well, I read Housekeeping actually as an assigned text in college, but does she like give talks now? She got like in 2016, she got the Library of Congress Prize for American Fiction. Like a lot of people like love her stuff. Wow. They love it. All right. That's definitely one variation I'm unfamiliar with. (laughs) What's next? Okay. Woofing. Okay. Yes. Here's how I know about woofing. Okay. (laughs) My good friend, Olivia Miss. Olivia, I love you. <laughs> After college graduation, she had a full crisis, as we all did. <laughs> Kim, have you said her last name? We're gonna do no, this to her. I want, I want people to know because the thing is, like, there's very few white women in my life who are like my best friends, but Olivia is mm-hmm. one of my best friends. So when she was going through this, I was the Octavia Spencer in her life that was like, "Girl, are you serious?" Oh my god! But after graduation, we both came home to Minnesota. We're both just like losing our freaking minds, and she's like, "You know what? I'm gonna go to a farm in California, and I'm gonna find myself." Yeah. And I was like, "What are you looking for?" And she's like, "I want to be." connected to the earth oh my god <laughs> so that's it i had never heard of this in my life but yeah. she told me and she got so much from it and like really valued the experience <laughs> but um i only know about this yeah because my one white friend told me yeah okay <laughs> she missed my graduation party she's like sorry i'm like milking a goat yeah like, what exactly <laughs> anyway. okay, so woofing is like you go uh i'll, I'll just read from the website wolf right. organizations it's like a it's an acronym, W-W-O-O-F. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it stands for because it doesn't say so on the main page, but okay. it's like something, something organic farming. Connects people who want to live and learn on organic farms in small holdings with people who want to share their lifestyles, teach new skills, and welcome volunteer help. There are places in Africa, Americas, Asia, Europe, Middle East, and Oceania. So like, yeah. And then the co- cover photo is like a white guy like kneeling next to some African kids and there's a cow. <laughs> Oh my god! I just remember what she told me. I was like, I cannot believe anyone yeah. would want to do this. I know several this. people who did it, but she did it, and she like got so much out of my it. My friend Mari did it as part of like a research grant from Stanford in mm. France, and she studied like French fairy tales and folk tales and oh, stuff. That sounds while cool. also milking cows. It sounds awful to me because I'm not a rural girl. Me I'm either. a I'm an inside girl. Me too. But uh, yeah, that's a thing I've only heard of white people doing. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. What's next? Okay. Shouts to Olivia. (laughs) Shouts to Olivia. Do you know about Montessori school? 
Okay, yes, I do know about this. I think I also learned from a white person. Probably me. Maybe you. Oh, maybe I knew somebody in college who described it to me. But Okay, so here's my impression. You okay. tell me if I'm right. Okay. It's like a school where it's not school. It's like, <laughs> it's like okay, we're going to explore ourselves and like explore our interests in different ways Mm -hmm. like not structured where i went to a public elementary school and it's like you know this is phonics or whatever (laughs) whereas in monastery school it's more like using our hands or or getting in touch with our something yeah but so that and i i yeah my impression of it was just like people who don't want their kids to be a part of the like structured system yeah do this is that right yeah okay so Montessori schools are I went to one I went to Montessori preschool okay in Pasadena and it's just like you know a specific idea about education come up with this woman by named Maria Montessori I think you can have other levels of schools but I think pre-k and k one two are like the most common it's like Mm -hmm. for little kids and basically it's just like everyone who went to Montessori Montessori school is just like you make a lot of art stuff and it's very like tactile it's kind of like the free range philosophy okay you know but you also like like learn to read oh yeah, yeah totally yeah so on Wikipedia once again it says the Montessori method views the child as one who is naturally eager for knowledge and capable of initiating learning in a supportive thoughtfully prepared learning environment so it's like there's block learning which is like Like there's like, you get three hours to just be outside and you're like supposed to explore leaves or whatever. Oh, right. Um, And you can like move around to different stations as you wish. And like, there's different opportunities for you to learn things like at different stations, but it's more just like, they think that you'll go and figure it out. You're like, you'll be interested. And so you'll go try to explore stuff. Okay. Okay. So my question for you is obviously, (laughs) were there any black people there? I mean, I don't remember. It's, like, before I remember, kind of. The first school I remember going to was the Learning Castle. All right. (laughs) Which is also in California, which is where I got made fun of because I told the other kids about the difference between identical and fraternal twins (laughs) because there were fraternal twins and nobody believed me about... About, Why wouldn't they believe you? I don't know, because these two kids were like, we're twins. And someone else was like, no, you're not. You don't look alike. And mm-hmm. I was like, they're fraternal twins. I remember and that I was conversation. Like, Nerd. So. Anyway. Okay. okay. I know that one. All okay, right. Okay, cool. Um, do you know what VBS is? VBS. Is it like shopping? Some kind of shopping? No. The first word is vacation. Oh, Bible school? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I went to vacation Bible school. You did specifically vacation Bible school, the curriculum handed down by head of vacation Bible school? Because I've only done it at my white churches and there were only white kids in the videos. Okay. That's why I thought of this. There are videos? Okay. I feel like I did this. Okay. Did I do this? Then maybe I'm wrong, but I just, I thought of it because I remembered there were only white kids in the videos and the songs are very white. Okay, what's like the most popular song? I don't know the most popular because I just remember those specific ones from like the three years I did it at the church I went to in Pennsylvania. But the one I remember the most with all the hand like motions that go with it is doing what God says to do will always be the best for you. He's the one that knows you best. Nope. Like, that's really white, right? <laughs> So. You're right. I did not participate in that. Okay, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> I remember they're like themed every year for a week. This one was a farm theme. So okay. all the videos were like kids on a farm. Vacation Bible School is just like <laughs> a themed week of camp at church and there's like activities and they give you like stuff to do. So okay. yeah, I don't know. Do you know about the Tao of Pooh? The Tao of Pooh. Yeah. Mm-mm. Okay. What's okay, that? cool. So okay. this is another my feeling was that the right realm to hit on for these was like fake white spiritualism shit. Mm-hmm. So the Tao of Pooh is this book that like we had that my mom and I read together where it's just like another kind of Marilyn Robinson style would go along with all this other stuff like it's like Taoism. Okay. Through the eyes of Winnie the Pooh. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> Literally a Western look at wait, Taoism. Wait, wait. <laughs> it's called the Tao of Pooh. Wait, wait. For some reason when you said Pooh, I thought, oh, there's another Pooh. No. It's Winnie the Pooh. The? Yeah. And there's the cover is like, it says the Tao of Pooh in like the block lettering that everything in the late <laughs> 90s was written in. And then it has a picture of Winnie the Pooh with a balloon. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. And it's so like, what are some of the teachings? Yeah. So it'll be like, it'll be like interpretations of Taoism, which I clearly obviously don't know anything about, you know, a quote from the books and then a quote from a Taoist or Taoist text. Okay. And then it'll be like, Pooh talks about 
enjoying every breakfast. How can we talk about enjoying our time at the breakfast table together and like like that kind of thing. Like, oh my God. Pooh finds the joys in little moments with Piglet. Are you finding the joy in what? little like <laughs> And the thing that's so fascinating to me about this is like it's not harmful at all. It's just so odd. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so it's for adults, but through poo examples. Is it for yeah. adults? Yeah, yeah. This is so interesting. So it's like, okay, here's something that's not at all Western. We'll put it through a lens you can understand, mm-hmm. which is this pantsless bear. Mm-hmm. That is on the New York very, Times bestseller wow. list for 49 weeks. That You know what? That's a perfect <laughs> example because that is incredibly white. Yeah. This idea that's like, <laughs> actually learning about Taoism, too difficult for you. Yeah. Let me put it in words that you understand. Here's poo. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I hope that was... The Tao of poo? Yeah. I'm going to text my mom about this. <laughs> Oh my god! I really enjoyed it. My mom and I read it together when I was homeschooled as like my spirituality teaching. Nice. It was really fun. Oh my god. It sounds fun. It honestly sounds really effective, to be honest. Yeah. Because it's like very clear examples. It's I think it is so funny it's to think just, about. <laughs> it's just a lot of these things, and like woofing is the same thing. Just like trying to bring <laughs> intentionality and purpose totally. to sense. your life. It makes sense. It makes sense. It really does. Wow. That was incredible. I really love this experiment. Let's do this again. Okay, cool. I'm Next glad time we I run out of successful. ideas, we'll do this again. Okay, good. It's great. And that's our show. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the stuff we mentioned today. And don't forget to send us your questions by email or voice recording to fyi at she's all fat pod.com. Please make sure to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's super important in making sure people find the show. If you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, we'll give you a shout out on the pod next week. She's All Fat is created, produced, and hosted by us, Sophie Carter-Khan and April K. Quio. We are an independent production. If you'd like to support the work we do, you can join our Patreon by visiting patreon.com slash she's all fat pod. When you pledge to be a supporter, you'll get all sorts of goodies and extra content. This week, we're posting more information, resources, and readings about Lucy, <laughs> Zachary, Nicole, just for our Patreon supporters. Our music was composed and produced by Carolyn Pennypacker Riggs. Our website was designed by Jesse Fish, and our logo is by Britt Scott. This episode episode was mixed and edited by Maria Wortel. Our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter handles are at She's All Fat Pod. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Bye! Bye. And not peel buttons, buttons, girl. Uh huh. I'm trying to feel it. You aren't. The lyrics. <laughs> you don't know the. Words. Or not the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> okay.